yes, hell is frozen over and I'm making a video about 3D printing. This is actually something I'm really excited about and it's uh, something I'm sharing out to all of my square people. So if you don't know, I have invented this tool a few years ago. If you're like me, I bet you have a bunch of old tools. Well, just throw them all away. This tool replaces almost none of them, but you still want it anyways. Well, what is it? It's the square. It's available at tennisway.net slash square, S-Q-W-A-Y-R-E. Before I even manufactured this one, I made the first prototype. There was something missing. I'll put a link to other videos about this so you can go learn more or you can go to the website and you can read about it. Um, so there's a metric and an imperial version. It's a, it's a ruler, it's got a perfect 90 degree, it's got a perfect 45 degree, and you can use it for doing all sorts of different layout and measuring and marking and whatnot. Um, the one thing that makes this design really good is that it's perfectly flat, but the downside of it is it doesn't have the lip like the traditional carpenter square. So if you need to do that and you wanna get a perpendicular line off of your straight edge, with my tool, you have to line it up very carefully with your fingers and then hope that you are correct. So I have CNC capability and then I've got laser capability later after inventing this. And um, with the laser I now can make these out of other materials like this is Lexan. So um, those are also available. Um, and I, I had ideas for how to make a lip for this that was detachable and none of them were working for me. And then when I got the 3D printer, it opened up a whole new world of designing, prototyping, and manufacturing for me. I drew this piece at the same time I designed the square, but I never really had any success in cutting it out in the CNC. I wasn't really finding the right materials, and I scrapped it. But then when the 3D printer came along, I took my CNC vectors, and in a matter of minutes, I made it a 3D model in Aspire and printed it just as is. It was so accurate that I couldn't put it in. The holes were exactly the same size. I didn't shrink them down a tiny bit. And uh, I also made it a little bit too thin, so I took another stab at it. I reduced the size of the plugs that go into the holes about a tenth of a millimeter and printed it out, and it fit perfectly. You can see in my original design, I made the corner contour with the top, and I made the bottom lip exactly a half inch from the edge. I thought that reference point might come in handy. But um, I wasn't sure if it was really fully designed yet, so I took it to the streets. And by streets, I mean Instagram. Is there anything else this could do that would make sense for the way you use the square? Are there any features we could add to this? Uh, I'd be curious of what your thoughts are. Most of the stuff you see here on my YouTube channel I do in real time on Instagram, so if, if you're into this sort of thing, you might want to go hang out there. I'm not going to mention any names because almost every modification I made uh, was suggested by more than one person, but thank you everyone who played along. One thing that came up was French Curve. So you can see I pulled a French curve off the internet and did just that. I sort of edited that curve a little bit. For me, it was all about curves, not necessarily angles, because the square already takes care of all those angles. So I thought any additional piece should be for making curves and whatnot. Um, I also added that hole so you could hang it on the nail. The hole is exactly 3 16 inches to complement the other holes that are already built into the square. And I shrunk down that curvy shape that I had that went all the way to the edge so you could flip it over and use it on either side of the square. I did all my modeling in Aspire because I'm comfortable with that program, and I used Cura Ultimaker to send the information to the MakerMade 3D printer. This is not the first 3D printer I've seen, but it is the first one I've used, and it was very simple to figure out. Um, I watched a quick tutorial about heating up the board and how to sort of set it all up, and the screen is easy to read and it makes sense, and I just clicked buttons and started printing. It was really a lot easier than I expected. I'm still a total newbie when it comes to 3D printing, but here's a couple things I've learned from experimenting on my own and from making mistakes and talking to a couple of people that have a little bit more experience. You want to level your board every time you do a print. There's metal and heat, expansion, contraction. So there are little adjuster wheels. What I do is I slide a little piece of paper under the nozzle and you want to make the piece of paper touch this sort of edge and just, just be a little bit tight to pull out. If it's too loose, it's not going to stick right, and if it's too tight, it's going to get squished down and drag and clog up your tip and stuff. So um, you do all four corners, and what's a good practice to do is to go around twice and then check in the center, and you should be good to go. The other thing to, to um, look out for is your tips getting clogged. You can see here's one that needs to be cleaned. See that looks, it's got plastic all over it and whatnot. But I bought this whole bag, there's like 40 or 50 of them in here for $12. 
And the, uh, the way I've found to clean them is I soak them in a little bit of acetone. Make sure you have a metal container to pour the acetone in because it's plastic, it's going to disappear. Uh, but what that acetone does is it loosens up the plastic so I can kind of pull it off. And then in the 3D printer comes this little skinny needle thing and I have properly wrecked mine now. So after soaking in an acetone, I heat it up with a torch, get it a little bit hot, and then I just sort of push all of that gunky plastic out, sort of scrape around on the inside. And it takes a couple minutes, but it's not a big deal. But it is enough of a deal to where I don't want to do it every time I'm running a print, so that's why I bought the extras. I did another round on Instagram asking for suggestions, and I did make one for the metric version as well. And a couple of people suggested having some sort of visual or physical references for using those curves, so I added those notches and uh, printed it out again. I also changed the font a little bit to make that print easier and um, messed with the thicknesses a little bit. But before we look at that, let's discuss this technology for a minute. Longtime viewers of my channel may hardly recognize me at this point. Now, <laughs> my mission hasn't changed. Uh, I'm still trying to make things out of reclaimed and locally sourced materials and, you know, create a manufacturing environment that has less impact on our planet. Um, but when I started my business and this YouTube channel, I was focusing with pretty much, you know, 19th and 20th century technology. And I had no interest in learning CNC's or any of this other stuff. But I've completely changed my mind on that, and here's why. I was always busy focused and looking on just my personal trash pile in my neighborhood and then making stuff from it and trying to sell it into my neighborhood. Um, but that's not how business works. I have customers all over the country and the world that want this stuff, and so now I'm forced to ship it. And I'm really not that much better than the current manufacturing structure by doing that. So. The way things are manufactured now is that we harvest the material somewhere in the world, it gets shipped to a factory somewhere else in the world, it gets put in a warehouse, it gets shipped to the stores, and that's got to change. So um, I kind of see the future being more like micro factories uh, that are based on some of this tech located in every neighborhood around the world, right? So now, if someone in California wants my coffee table that I designed here in Connecticut, instead of me making it and shipping it, I can email the file over to my partner in California, he makes the coffee table there from locally sourced materials and ships it out locally, and now the footprint's much smaller. Likewise, his coffee table design, he emails to me, and I make it for the East Coast customer. And I don't see this working in only the maker community. I see the future of, of making being this way. T. L. Gray, hot. Instead of these giant factories in one location in the world, I don't see any reason why every brand name product can't be made in this in this situation with licensed uh, makers and vendors. And I, I don't know how it's all gonna pan out, I'm not smart enough, but I know where it's gonna start. And it's gonna start with learning this tech and I wanna be a part of the solution, not just stuck back in the old problem. And that brings us full circle back to my little square experiment. Now the squares I make locally or I make myself, but they do ship all over the world. And this part, instead of me making them and shipping them, you're gonna make them or whoever wants to make them. I'm going to put this file out available for anybody anywhere in the world to just download and, and make this however they want. Totally free, of course, just to start experimenting with this. If you go to timsway.net slash square, S-Q-W-A-Y-R-E, you will find the STL files that I use to make these actual tools, as well as just a outline, the vectors of it. So if you want to make any changes or remodel it or redesign it yourself, you're more than welcome to. I'm curious to see what happens. I, I love this idea of just sort of playing around with open source and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with this. So all of these files are available for free download at timsway.net slash square, that's S-Q-W-A-Y-R-E, and there is also a link in the description, but if you can just remember timsway.net slash square, S-Q-W-A-Y-R-E, it's all you need to know to be able to find all the information on all of these tools. Now, one of the comments a lot of people made was that they wanted something angular. And like I said, I personally didn't want anything angular because I felt like the square kind of covered that. But I made one anyways with a 120 degree angle and 135 degree angle for people who want to make octagons and hexagons. Uh, and that left you also with two 90 degree angles and a 95 degree angle, which is sort of silly, but it's there. And um, this one is also available open source for you to make it the way you want it. I did all of my printing of these at just a very basic level of uh, quality for printing to keep them printing a little bit quickly. Uh, this one took a little bit longer, almost twice as long because it is bigger. Um, and I don't see the need to do any kind of high quality print. These are accurate enough. I want to point out that I am using PLA, which is a plant-based plastic. Uh, so it's a little bit more eco-friendly than just the regular old HDPE or oil-based plastics. And I do plan on experimenting with some reclaimed and recycled materials in the future as well. 
The reason I proudly support and endorse MakerMaid CNC is not that they make the best CNC machine in the world, but they make one that's affordable that just about anybody can have. And, uh, and now they're trying to do the same with the 3D printers. So what this does is it's going to help increase the network of, of learning and accessibility to this tech that could maybe make this future of manufacturing flourish. They are putting the tools into the hands of people that are going to create this network in the future. Um, so I wholeheartedly support what they're doing and um, I would appreciate you supporting them as well. And one of the ways you can support them is by jumping into this revolution with me and shopping at MakerMadeCNC.com and if you use the code TIMSWAY15 you can save 15% off whatever you buy there, CNC, 3D printer, parts, supplies, etc. All that stuff plus free shipping. So MakerMadeCNC.com, TIMSWAY15 is the code. Thanks for watching and be good.